Hi gang, Vince Bruzio here from PreviewsWorld.com. I'm sitting here with Robert Kirkman at the Image Expo. He's going to be talking to us today about what's going on, about maybe some of the panels you can expect to see. It's the February 24th through 26th, I believe, that the show is running. And uh, Robert's going to talk to us a few things about what's going on. Sir, thank you so much for taking hey, the man. time to talk to us and no basically tell us what's going on. And you're now an Image Partner. I am. And so I don't know what that means in terms of what your daily workload goes. <laughs> because you're well known for doing things like, of course, you know, The Walking Dead, everybody knows. And this is the number one cable show here as far as the books he's got out, coming out simultaneously. Titles like Invincible. You've been doing things like the amazing, excuse me, Astounding Wolf Band. And it's just... You wear so many different hats, sir. I mean, I don't know how you keep up the pace. You're like the magic man. I, I enjoy doing what I do, so it's okay that it you know, takes up every minute of my life. Yes, it, it has to. It has to because you're doing everything from being an, now, you're an executive producer uh -huh. for The Walking Dead. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a full-time job. I mean, I, I mean, I'm a writing executive producer, so I'm actually in the writer's room, which is one of my duties. And, uh, you know, that's a good six to eight hours a day, sometimes more. Uh, but I also have to do, uh, you know, casting meetings, and I sit in uh, on visual effects stuff. I have to, we have visual effects meetings where we have to go over all the different shots and look over that stuff. And uh, I don't know, there's just all kinds of uh, various administrative duties where I'm uh, able to work with my other executive producers, uh, Glenn Mazzara, Gail Ann Hurd, and David Albert, to, you know, put everything together for the show and uh, make it happen. I'm sure this is going to be stuff you're going to be asking you about at the uh, panels. You're going to be sitting in on. The, uh, the panel that more or less is going to be also hosted with, uh, I think Todd's going to be sitting there, and, yep. and basically the Image Founders. Yep. Now I'm curious, how were you basically approached to be an Image Partner? Well, I mean, I've been doing Image books for a number of years, and I think I had proven to them over that time that while I had done books at Marvel, my heart was definitely much more in the creator-owned space, and uh, I think they saw somewhat of a kindred spirit in me, and that uh, you know I was ready to take that plunge, and I was ready to only work for Image, and you know, only do creator own stuff, and uh, I think it, you know, had something to do with the fact that my books were successful at Image. I think that helped. But uh, you know, I had befriended most of those guys, uh, you know, over the course of my years in comics, and you know, they started thinking that uh, uh, you know, if Image is going to continue, it's going to have to inject new blood into the company every now and then. And I think I was the first attempt at doing that. I I think that pretty much ties into uh, what the action line is now in the, uh, when just looking at the latest short previews, it's going to be coming out in the stores February 29th, yay, and then we just got the front cover, Experience Creativity. Mind, now, mind right, the Gap. Up. Mind the Gap, right. Good we got, this is coming out now. The guy that wrote this. Jim McCann. He used to write for One Day, one, uh, one day to Live, One Time to Live. It was one of those ABC soaps, I think it was. Did it? Yeah. I know he was a uh, marketing guy at Marvel, that's how I met him. So you've got everything. I try not to hold that against him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got everything from guys that were doing you know, soap operas to, uh -huh. uh, to to now you're working with, uh, you're doing, Images doing crime noir. You've got supernatural titles. I mean, when the yep. company first started out 20 years ago, it was superhero titles. Yeah, well, that's what, kind of what the market demanded. Those guys were genius in that they knew that their fan base of which I would count myself among, uh, loved that kind of stuff. And so they were getting those 13 to 14 year old kids that were just eating their stuff up at Marvel. And so that's why the company was founded on, you know, superheroes and that kind of stuff. But over the years, as the industry has changed and I think matured and matured in a good way, uh, you know, people are starting to respond to things that aren't necessarily superhero comics in a much more, you know, substantial way. It's not like a niche market anymore. So you have things like horror comics like The Walking Dead being wildly successful, crime comics like Fatal burning up the sales charts. We've got a science fiction comic called Saga coming out from Brown Cave On and Fiona Staples. Staples that I think is just going to tear the charts apart. So uh, it's, a, it's a good time to be into comics, I think. It really feels like there's sort of a, a, a resurgence of golden age creativity. Mm -hmm. Because back then, I mean, you didn't have superhero books. You know, Action Comics didn't come out until 39, I think it was. Yeah. But uh, but even then, you've got so many different genres of literature that were being translated into comic stories. And just in looking at some of the books that are coming out now from uh, publishers like Fanagraphics, I think it was called Action, Mystery, Thrills, something like that. And they were showing um, just basically covers of the books. And there's so many romance comics and crime comics and art. And I'm seeing that now coming out from Image. 
I think it's a great thing for everybody. And it looks like there's really like this renaissance festival going on where you guys are just saying, hey, let's do this, let's do that. It's not just about, I mean, God knows I was buying Spawn from day one, but uh, the company has come so much farther now. It's really, you know, something else. Hey, look, in the past, a lot of people have talked about how widespread acceptance of comic books as a medium is not possible. You know, will always be that, you know, thing that, you know, parents don't want their kids to read, and that's a cool thing, and, you know, we should always kind of, you know, be that, that thing that people don't, really, don't quite understand, but is really cool, and I don't agree with that at all. I think that, you know, we are moving towards a space where, you know, comics can be as popular as movie and television, and, and you can see as many people reading comics and as many different kinds of people reading comics, and really the basis of that is giving those people more choices and growing the medium to a point where people don't associate it with superhero comics. Well, not associating with superhero comics, I think, is what's uh, really... Except for Invincible. In fact, <laughs> that's true. We don't want to forget Invincible. <laughs> but, I, but, I mean, the fact that you've got Walking Dead, which mm -hmm. obviously isn't a superhero comic, yeah. it's, it's bringing people in, from what I hear now, into comic shops and giving them the opportunity to discover things that they may have not seen before. That really is one of the most gratifying aspects of what The Walking Dead has become. Hearing from people that say, uh, I never liked comics, or I, love, I, you know, like I never read comics, and I've never been into a comic store before, and, and I do hear from a lot of people that are saying, like, this is the thing that you know got me into comics, and now I'm reading comics, or this is the thing that brought me back into comics, and mm -hmm. I think you know that's that to me is really extremely gratifying, and, and you know makes me feel like you know I'm doing a good job. I mean, anytime I can feel like all of the retailers that have been supporting me over the years are actually getting something from that support, like that makes me feel good. I think that those guys are in the trenches. They've been in the trenches since day one. They were hawking Walking Dead when it was selling 6,000 copies and then doing it now that it's selling, you know, a bunch of more copies. <laughs> uh, uh, so, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's really great to know that it is, you know, something that people are, are latching on to and, and, you know, it's bringing in new people. Now, speaking about retailers, given that there's only so many dollars to spend on books, sure. if a retailer, if you could give any advice to a retailer in terms of how can I go about supporting, you know, how, how to best support an indie title. I mean, well, thinking about how you would My, my main support. relationship with retailers is getting advice from them. I, uh -huh. gi giving advice is, is, is a, a new thing, but uh, I will say that I read an interview with Rob Liefeld this morning, okay. and one of the things that Rob Liefeld said was Marvel had uh, books by Jim Lee, Todd McFarlane, and me that were selling millions of copies, and we had to leave because that was, there was no place we could go but down. And one thing he said in that interview is that Marvel tried to replicate that success by doing variant covers and right. chromium covers, trying to, trying to devise a way to get million copies selling books without having to have it be the creator that's selling that. And what's interesting to me, and the thing that I latched on to when I read that, is that he said they never succeeded. Uh, they went to Image and they sold millions of copies, but Marvel never reached that selling point uh, with without those guys but the thing that's important to note and this is something that I think retailers you know I think most of them know this but there are books that are selling millions of copies right now in comics and they're books like The Walking Dead and Bone you know it's it's creator owned trade paperbacks it's it's new ideas it's things that are mainstream but are not considered mainstream in comics. You know, it's things like Why the Last Man, it's gonna be things like Fatal. You know, those are the things that I think are going to be the perennial sellers that you're going to be able to have on your shelf, that you're going to be able to talk pretty much anyone who comes into a store into buying, whether or not it's for them or it's a gift. I think those are the kind of things that appeal to a wide audience. And uh, I think most retailers already know that, which is a cool thing. 